Hi, everybody. I'm Ms. Karen at Adams Memorial Library. Thank you very much for joining me for another book report. For this week and next week, I've got holiday stories to share with you, mostly stories about Christmas. I've got my Christmas shirt on, it says reading is dear to us. And I even have a story to share with you this week about reindeer, so the shirt is especially appropriate this week. The stories I have this week are kind of maybe older or more traditional stories, and the ones we'll do next week are a little bit newer and maybe a little bit different. So any of these books, you can come to the library and check out. You can reserve them in Polaris if you would like, if you would like to read the whole story for yourself. But this first one is called Pick a Pine Tree. It's written by Patricia Tote and illustrated by Jarvis. This one is Madeline's Christmas. Oh, there's Madeline right there. You know I love Madeline, so this is how Madeline celebrates one Christmas. And this is written and illustrated by Ludwig Bemmelman. Then I have two versions of the 12 Days of Christmas. You know the song with the partridge in a pear tree? So it's the traditional song with different illustrations. In this book, the pictures of Isla Wynn Pham. And in this book, the illustrations are by Jane Ray. Here's the reindeer story. It's called How the Reindeer Got Their Antlers. And it's written by Geraldine McGochran and the illustrations are by Heather Holland. And for this one, I don't even feel like it's Christmas unless I read The Night Before Christmas. So these are the words from the famous Christmas poem written by Clement Seymour. And in this book, the illustrations are by James Marshall. And this one is a newer version of that old poem. This one is called Twas Noche Buena. And it says a Christmas story in English and Spanish. The words for this kind of update to The Night Before Christmas were written by Roseanne Greenfield Thong and the illustrations of Isera Palacios. So let's talk about these books a little bit more. This first one, Pick a Pine Tree, is by the same people who did Pick a Pumpkin that I told you about when we were doing Halloween stories. But if you go and get a real tree, if you go to a tree farm, you might see a deer like this. Or if you went to a tree lot, you could pick a pine tree from the lot. Tall and slim or short and squat, whatever kind you would like. You bring it home, the top of your car. And then once you get home, you do the regular things. They're making some space for it. They're putting the tree into the tree stand and making sure the tree has lots of water. And then it is time to get the decorations and bring them down and start decorating because the pine tree, once it's all lit up and has all the decorations on it, you don't really call it a pine tree anymore. Then it's going to be a Christmas tree. So if you want to see how these people decorated their Christmas tree, maybe give you some ideas. Maybe see if it looks like your Christmas tree. You can check, pick a pine tree out from the library. Madeline's Christmas. I especially like the picture on the cover because it's the Eiffel Tower. Decorated like a Christmas tree. And it's the Eiffel Tower because Madeline lives in Paris, where the Eiffel Tower is. In fact, she lives in an old house in Paris that was covered in vines. Madeline lived with her friends and they leave the house at half past nine in two straight lines in rain or shine or snow. And the smallest one was Madeline. Now it was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Or like everyone else in that house, which was old, the poor mouse was in bed with a miserable cold. Oh, this could happen to anybody, but oh, it's no fun to be sick on Christmas, isn't it? But everybody in the house, including the, the mice, are sick. And only our brave little Madeline was up and about and feeling just fine. Luckily, there she's bringing everybody tea and soup and Miss, Miss Clavel's getting a hot water bottle to make her feel better. So poor Madeline's gotta take care of everybody. 
Suddenly there came a knock which made her pause. Could it perhaps be Santa Claus? But no, it's somebody else. It is a magician at the house. But she doesn't know it yet because first she just thinks it's a rug sale seller. And he says, I have warm rugs. And she thinks, wouldn't it be a great idea to get a rug for everybody? And then it will help keep them warm. Yeah, so they get out of bed. It'll keep their feet nice and warm. So that's what she does. But then the rug seller thinks, oh, no, I sold all my rugs and it's freezing out here. And I, I'm really cold. So it goes back to Madeline's house to see if she can help. And she does. She helps keep him warm. So she helps him and then he helps her. And that's when she finds out that he's a magician. And those rugs might be even better than something that can just keep everybody warm. They might help them do something else, too. If you want to find out, you check out Madeline's Christmas. I like the 12 Days of Christmas. I always like that song. I think it's a lot of fun to sing. And I like both of these versions because they start out the traditional way with somebody giving a partridge in a pear tree to a friend. And more, and more, and more, and more, and more. And why I like this one. Oh, here's what it looks like when all the gifts are there at the end. But I love this one because the maids who are milking, and the pipers, and the ladies dancing, and the drummers drumming, and the lords leaping are from all over the world. So they all have different outfits on. And there's a lot, a lot to look at in here. You can study the pictures. You can just try to figure out who's from where. And at the end, you can see all the gifts together. And why I like this one, the illustrations with the illustrations by Jane Ray. I like it because same thing. It starts out with somebody. And in this case, it's this one takes place in Belgium. So all the houses are here along the water. And there's a delivery for the young woman who lives in this house, and it's a partridge in a pear tree. But in this story, oh, the young lady finds out that, you know, if you get all these presents in your house, which is, you know, really not that big, it could get a little crowded and maybe noisy if all of the instrumentalists are playing, maybe a little smelly if all the cows are living in your house. So in this story, Finds out that maybe best present could be something a little simpler that just comes straight from the heart. So presents are good. Too many presents eh, might be less good. This one that tells how the reindeer got their antlers, they get some presents too that all the animals do because after the animals were made, they started arguing about who was the best and who should be the king of all the animals. So an angel says, no, 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 no. The maker loves all of you and thinks you are all kings and queens. And I'll give you all a crown, something special for on your head to show you that you are all special. And so the lion gets a mane and, um, oh, the rooster gets a comb. The penguin got a white crest on its head, but the reindeer got special antlers. And the reindeer didn't like those antlers. She thinks they make her look ugly. But the rest of the animals, they all started arguing again about whose crown was the best. And the poor angel just said, no, 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 stop arguing. You all need to live in different places. So. The lions went where it's warm. The penguins went where it's cold. But when the angel looked for the reindeer, the little, little reindeer had gone off all by herself and kept going further and further north to someplace that was also very cold. And the little reindeer had, had children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and they lived there very quietly until one day they saw a man in a red coat who was pulling a sleigh all by himself. And he said, oh, my goodness, I need some help. Who will help me pull the sleigh? And the other animal said, 
no, no, we're tired. We've done enough. We're not going to do it. But the reindeer came out and said, well, we could do it. We could help. And so they did. They helped pull the sleigh. And to thank them for all their help, these reindeer, Santa gave a very special gift to one night a week, or one night a year, rather, when they're helping to pull the sleigh, these reindeer can, yes, reindeer can fly because they help Santa, and Santa told them how beautiful they really are. And I certainly think they're beautiful, too. So, that's why those, the reindeer with their beautiful antlers help Santa every year. So, here, Santa and the reindeers are coming, taking a little break, maybe, watching TV. Santa here, he's got some cowboy boots on, changing it up a little. But I'm sure you know how this one goes. It starts out, it was the night before Christmas and all through the house, just like in Madeline's book. No, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. But this one, the mouse doesn't have a cold, just sleeping. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care. The children were dreaming of sugar plums. And Mama and her kerchief and I and my cat had just settled our brains for a long winter nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Oh, and the dog and the cat and the, and the chicken who lived there are all saying, too, oh, will you look at that? Oh, they smoke never in all my born days. What could it possibly be but Santa arriving? So this is a great story, very traditional story that you can read and read all about when Santa comes to the house. And if you want to read a newer version of it, you could try Twas Noche Buena. Because for this family, yeah, it was Noche Buena. It's Christmas Eve, so they're making tamales. They're putting out their, their nativity scene, putting the star on the tree. And then they go out to join Las Posadas, where they walk to the different houses and they ask to come in. And the first house says no, the second house says no, but the third house it was the inn that, that the Holy Family got to stay in. And so the third, the third house, everybody gets to come in. And then the family goes back to their house and they have, oh, yummy hot chocolate. And then their house, there arose out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter. They ran to the door and said, what's the matter? But, oh, there is nothing wrong. It turns out they have a pinata outside. So they get to break the pinata before they go to church for mass. And afterwards, fireworks. They get to see some fireworks outside. So everybody celebrates Christmas a little differently. You can find out how this family does it. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you have favorite Christmas stories you would like to tell me about, I would love to hear them. You can tell me about them when you come into the library, or you could email at kids at adamslib.org and tell me about it. And thank you for joining me today. And please watch again next week and tell you about even more Christmas stories. So thank you, everybody. Happy holiday season. See you later. Thank you. Bye.